Hello everyone, Professor Christensen here. Um, we are back to look at an example of interest capitalization. So hopefully you watched, there was a short video about five minutes um, introducing the idea of interest capitalization. If you haven't watched that, go back and take a look at it so you know what it is we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and now we're going to run through an example. So buckle up, it's a little bit complicated but the beauty of a video is you can go back and watch it again. Okay, so here is our example company. So this company, Chamberlain, borrowed $200,000 at a 12% interest rate on January 1st for the specific purpose of constructing equipment to be used in its operations. These are the expenditures that they made during the year. And then they tell us that there's some other debt existing on January 1st, which is some bonds and a note payable. And our job is to determine the amount of interest to be capitalized. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this systematically. The first question we're going to answer is, does this asset qualify? Well, we're doing an interest capitalization example, so that might be a little bit of a hint. But yes, the asset qualifies because, if you remember from our previous video, um, that assets being constructed for the company's own use um, are one type of asset that qualifies for interest capitalization. So we're going to say yes, the asset is being constructed for the company's use. <coughs> okay, excuse me. All right, so now we have to determine the capitalization period. So remember from the previous video, capitalization period begins when we have A, E, and I. So when we have activities, expenditures, and interest. So since we have expenditures happening and we started our construction on January 1st, it looks like we're going to be starting on January 1st. So remember it begins with A, E, I. Right, so that's going to be January 1st. It ends when construction is completed. Um, so following expenditures were made prior to completion on December 31st, so it ends on when construction is complete, December 31st. Now, this is a simple example that starts on January 1st, ends December 31st. You might be looking at examples that span over two years. As we mentioned before, in that case, you're going to stop at the end of the year and capitalize the interest for that one year. And then in the following year, you're gonna capitalize some more interest. Okay, so next up, remember when we said, when we did the introduction video, we said that we're going to use weighted average accumulated expenditures, which is our principal times our time, and then we're going to multiply that by an interest rate, okay? All right, so take that out of there for a minute. Let's see how this works. So what we're going to do is say how long, so we spent this money on January 1st. So we're going to say how long was this money outstanding during the year? So if we started on January 1st, that means it was outstanding the whole year, so 12 out of 12, okay? Now, that's gonna turn into a one, which is why I put the 12 over 12 over here to remind you that that's 12 out of 12, okay? Now, we spent money on April 30th, so that's going to be outstanding from April 30th until the end of the year. So, not outstanding January, February, March, April, but, <clears throat> excuse me, from May 1st to the end of the year, it's gonna be outstanding, so that's eight, over 12. All right, again, it's going to convert it for me, but it's 8 over 12, 8 out of the 12 months. Remember, interest is always annual, and so we're always looking at um, an annual here. This has to be a fraction of a year. All right, next up, November 1st. So that was outstanding for two months, so 2 divided by 12, <clears throat> and here we have 2 over 12. And then finally, we spent some money on December 31st, but that's really not outstanding at all because that's the last day of the year. So that's just gonna be a zero, okay? All right, so now 
our weighted average accumulated expenditures are equal to the amount that we spent times the capitalization period. So this times that. Okay? And we're going to drag that down. So each of them, the 150,000 times two thirds, 300,000 times one sixth, and then the zero. Okay? Our total weighted average accumulated expenditures are all of those added up. All right, so we have 250,000 in weighted average accumulated expenditures. That's an important number. We're going to come back and we're going to use it. All right, so let's make that bold to remind us. Weighted average accumulated expenditures, $250,000. Okay, all right, so now we're going to go back to that flow chart. Remember that I said was so complicated. Um, and hopefully you have a screenshot of that. I should have told you to take a screenshot, but um, hopefully you have that flow chart. I'll give you a minute. I'm going to pause this for a minute so you can go take a look at the flow chart or go find it and then we're going to use that to determine our interest rate. Okay, so we're back. Hopefully you have this flow chart in front of you. That's your flow chart of interest rates. Okay, so now we're going to decide what interest rates we have to use in this particular problem. So first question, do we have specific debt? Well, if you look back, I'll jump back and forth here. Let me, let me, um, let's go back here. Do we have specific debt? If we look back, it said that they borrowed 200,000 at 12% for the specific purpose of constructing equipment. It's not always going to be that, um, obvious, but in this case we do have specific debt. Okay. So yes, we have specific debt. Is it enough to cover our weighted average accumulated expenditures? Well, our specific debt is 200,000, but our weighted average accumulated expenditures are 250,000. Okay? So our specific debt is 200,000. Our weighted average accumulated expenditures are 250. So the answer is no. It's not enough to cover the weighted average accumulated expenditures. Do we have other debt? Well, yes, we have other debt. Remember, we have a, a bonds payable and we have a note payable. Okay. Let's go back. So we do have other debt. Do we have more than one? Yes, we have more than one. So if we have more than one, we have to find an average interest rate for those other, the other two pieces of debt. Okay. So that means we're going to be dealing with three interest rates here, but pretty much we're going to look at the interest rate on the specific debt, start with that, and then since we need other debt, we're going to calculate the weighted average rate on the other debt. All right, so let's go back and let's see how this works. Okay, so we're going to have to calculate the weighted average interest rate on the other debt. <clears throat> the way we do that is we take our total interest on our other debt and divide it by the total principal on the other debt. Okay, so take the total interest that you would pay in a year on that debt, divide it by the total principal. So let's go back here. So what do we have? We have 500,000 at 14 percent. So the principal there is 500,000 and the interest rate is 14 percent. And then we have 300,000 where our interest rate is 10 percent. Okay, so 300,000 and the interest rate on that is 10 percent. Okay, so our interest on the first one, principal times our rate, 70,000. The same thing on the other one, 30,000. So our total interest is $100,000. Our total principal is 800,000. Okay, so our weighted average rate is going to be 100,000 divided by 800,000. Now, remember a little reality check here. We know it's going to be between 10% and 14%. So if you get something crazy, make sure you didn't do something wrong, right? Because the average has to be between those two. We have a little more debt at the 14%, so it's going to be higher than the average average, which would be 12%, right? It's going to be a little higher than 12% because we borrowed more money 
at the 500,000. So our weighted average interest rate is equal to total interest, 100,000, divided by total principal, 800,000, 12.5%. Okay? 12.5%. Okay, so that's our weighted average interest rate, another important little piece of information. Okay, so next up, now we're going to find our avoidable interest. And by avoidable interest, we mean, in theory, this is the interest that we wouldn't have had to pay if we didn't construct this equipment. Okay, avoidable interest is the interest we wouldn't have had to pay if we didn't build this equipment. Okay, so our goal is we want to multiply our weighted average accumulated expenditures by an interest rate. Okay, our total weighted average accumulated expenditures have to be multiplied by some kind of interest rate. We're going to start with our specific debt. Remember we said we borrowed a 200000 in specific debt. You can't put more than the amount that you borrowed here. So our specific debt was 12%, right? And this is going to be the principal times the rate. Okay. All right. So now we need to add up to 250,000. So the other debt is going to be the, the rate here. The other debt is going to be the difference between the 250 and the 200,000. Okay. So that's $50,000. So the 50,000 gets multiplied by the 12.5 interest rate on the other debt, okay? So then we say 50,000 times the 12.5. We add those two up, and that gives us our total avoidable interest, okay? So this is avoidable avoidable interest, all right? Okay. So next up, so here's the rule. You, you capitalize the lower of actual interest or avoidable interest, okay? So we're going to capitalize, and remember, capitalizing, we're going to add it on to the cost of our asset. Capitalize the lower of actual or avoidable interest and prepare the journal entry. Okay, so now we have to calculate the actual interest that the company paid this year. Well, this is easy. Just take all of their debt. So we'll start with our specific debt. They paid 12% um, right, on their specific debt. And then they had these other two pieces of debt, right? They had, um, let's label these. So this was the specific debt. This was the bonds. And the bonds have an interest rate of 14%. And then we have the note, and the note was 300000 So that's all their debt, and this was at 10%. Okay? So we multiply all of those through, add them up, and we have total actual interest of $124,000. Okay? All right, so that's our actual interest. So we said we capitalize the lower of actual or avoidable. All right, so avoidable interest is lower. I'm going to write this down. And if you're doing a test, you want to tell your professor that you know avoidable interest is less than actual interest. So capitalize avoidable interest. All right, so now the journal entry to record interest for the year is going to look like this. So first we're going to debit equipment for the capitalized interest. Okay, and the capitalized interest is 30250 we're going to debit interest expense for the actual minus the amount we capitalized. 
And then we're going to credit cash or interest payable. They didn't tell us here, so we're going to do cash or interest payable for the total actual interest for the year. Okay, so our actual interest was 124000 So of the 124000 in interest that we paid that year, 30000 is getting capitalized, so that means the rest, the difference, the rest is going to be interest expense. Okay? All right, so that is an example of how you capitalize interest when you have more than one interest rate. I hope you find this helpful. Feel free to go back and look at it again. Um, we'll do another one that is a little bit less complicated that doesn't have as many um, interest rates. But if you can do this one, you can do any one. Okay, good luck in the rest of your studies.